Welcome to Biscara Labs. Picture this, your website suddenly gets a spike in traffic. Exciting, right? But then your server crashes and everything goes offline. That's where load balancing comes in. In this video, we'll guide you step-by-step step to set up an application load balancer on AWS. You'll learn how to route traffic to multiple EC2 instances to ensure high availability and secure them so they're only accessible through the ALB, not directly from the internet. By the end, you'll have a scalable and secure setup that keeps your application running smoothly, even under heavy load. Let's begin by launching two EC2 instances using Amazon Linux and select t2.micro to stay within the AWS free tier. Next, create a new security group that allows inbound HTTP traffic on port 80 from anywhere so we can easily access the web server from a browser. Before launching the instance, scroll down to the Advanced Details section, and in the User Data field, paste the script we prepared earlier. This will automatically install and configure a basic web server on each instance as soon as it boots. Once everything is set, go ahead and launch your EC2 instances. Once your EC2 instances are running, go to the EC2 dashboard and copy the public IP address of each instance. Open a browser and visit both public IPs one by one. You should see a simple web page showing the host name of each instance. This confirms that both servers are up, the web server is running, and your security group is correctly allowing HTTP traffic. Now that both EC2s are working independently, we're ready to set up the application load balancer to route traffic between them automatically. Now it's time to bring in the real hero of this setup, the application load balancer. Think of the ALB as your website's traffic controller. Instead of users connecting directly to your EC2 instances, they'll first go through the ALB, which then decides which server should handle the request based on health and availability. Here's how we'll set it up. Give Load Balancer a name, set the scheme to internet facing so it's accessible from the public internet, choose at least two availability zones. This ensures high availability. If one zone goes down, automatically shifts to the other. Create a new security group for the ALB. Allow inbound HTTP traffic on port 80 from anywhere so the load balancer can receive web requests from users over the public internet. Scroll down to the Target Group section and choose to create a new target group. Set the target type to Instances since we'll be routing traffic to our EC2 servers. Give the target group a name. Keep the protocol as HTTP and the port as 80. Make sure the VPC you select matches the one where your EC2 instances are running. Click Next and on the following screen, select both EC2 instances, then click Include as pending below. Once both instances appear in the list, click Create Target Group. Done. 
double check each section to ensure there are no misconfigurations. Once everything looks good, scroll down and click Create Load Balancer. AWS will start provisioning your ALB and within a minute or two, it should be ready to use. Once your load balancer is active, it's time for the moment of truth. Head over to the load balancer dashboard and copy the DNS name of your ALB. This is the public URL users will access. Now open it in your browser. You should see the host name of one of your EC2 instances displayed. Try refreshing the page a few times. You'll notice the host name changes. That's your application load balancer in action, automatically distributing traffic between both servers. Now, let's test what happens when one of your servers goes down. Go to your EC2 dashboard, select one of the instances, and click Instance State Stop Instance. Then, head over to the Target Group dashboard. You'll see that the stopped EC2 instance is now marked as unused. Now, open your browser and refresh the ALB DNS address a few times. And here's what you'll notice. The page still loads, but now you're only seeing the host name of the remaining EC2 instance. Behind the scenes, the ALB detected that one server is down. This is exactly what failover looks like in action. No downtime, no errors. Now let's bring everything back to full strength. Head over to the EC2 dashboard, select the instance we stopped earlier, and click Start. Give it a minute, and the application load balancer will automatically detect that it's healthy again. Behind the scenes, the ALB keeps checking each server through its health check, so once your EC2 instance is back online and serving traffic, it'll rejoin the rotation. Now, refresh your ALB DNS name in the browser a few times. You'll start seeing both host names again, confirming that traffic is once again being load balanced across both instances. Now let's lock things down and make this setup truly secure. Head over to the security group settings for your EC2 instances. You'll see an inbound rule that allows HTTP traffic from 0000. That means anyone on the internet can access your servers directly. Let's remove that. Instead, add a new inbound rule. Type HTTP port 80. Source, select Custom, and choose the security group used by your load balancer. What does this do? It tells AWS, only allow traffic from the ALB. Block everything else, even if someone tries to access the EC2 directly. Save the rules. Now, try visiting the public IP of your EC2 instance in the browser. Nothing. It won't respond but open the ALB DNS again and everything works perfectly. You've just secured your infrastructure the right way. Now your EC2 instances are hidden from public access, automatically load balanced, and able to recover from failure with zero downtime. This is a real world setup, the kind used in production environments everywhere. If you found this useful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay updated with more hands-on cloud tutorials, only on Bagascara Labs. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.